Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel my remote class today I shall take class on nutrition that is included in the sixth chapter that is life processes in your syllabus before going through that topic I shall show you the syllabus then I shall show you also the truncated syllabus that is been developed due to this pandemic situation created by COVID-19 thank you So here is the syllabus for class 10 of chapter 6 that is the life process and here are the subtopics what are life processes then nutrition then respiration followed by transportation and excretion this is the truncated syllabus uh, this has been truncated due to this pandemic situation created by covid 19 and these are the topics which you don't have to read so leave all these topics and read the rest thoroughly now let's start with the life processes now what are life processes actually uh, to perform to maintain our life we need to perform certain activities in our daily life these activities may include digestion respiration circulation reproduction excretion locomotion and movement etc so such activities of life is called life process so we can define it the basic functions performed by living beings to sustain themselves are called life process now this life process starts with nutrition so let's see what is nutrition the process by which an organism takes food and utilizes it is called nutrition now the question is why we do need nutrition so what is the importance of nutrition actually uh, organisms need energy to perform various activities in their daily life and the energy is supplied by the nutrients organisms need various raw materials for their growth and repair of worn out tissues and cells these raw materials are provided by the nutrients actually nutrients can be divided into two uh, categories macronutrients and micronutrients actually materials which provide nutrition to organisms are called nutrients and as i said the nutrients can be divided into two broad categories one is called macronutrient another one is called micronutrient carbohydrates proteins and fats are the main nutrients and these are called the macronutrients whereas minerals and vitamins are required in small amounts and hence they are called micronutrients let's start with the autotrophic nutrition auto means automatic that is the mode of nutrition in which an organism prepares its own food is called autotrophic nutrition all the green plants as well as the blue green algae who have chlorophyll they can produce their own food in presence of sunlight this is called autotrophic mode of nutrition now actually the process by which they made their food is called photosynthesis photosynthesis is the term made up of two words photos and synthesis photos means light and synthesis means to synthesize or to to make something now the biological process by which the activated chlorophyll converts light energy into chemical energy in presence of sunlight water and carbon dioxide to form glucose oxygen and water is called photosynthesis the photosynthesis is the term coined by Barnes, and this process can be divided into two one is called light phase another one is called dark phase light phase takes place in the grana region of the chloroplast whereas the dark reaction takes place in the stroma region of the chloroplast in case of light phase the light is essential and in case of dark phase it is light independent and this is the chemical equation of photosynthesis here we can see that six molecules of carbon dioxide reacting with 12 molecules of water to form one molecule of glucose six molecules of oxygen and six molecules of water now here the carbon dioxide has been reduced into glucose and water has been oxidized into oxygen so this is a typical example where oxidation and reduction is taking place now what are the raw materials for photosynthesis actually we, for photosynthesis the plants require various materials but the materials which are must without which the which a plant cannot make its own food these materials are called the raw materials the raw materials include sunlight chlorophyll carbon dioxide water here in this picture you can see this is a green plant 
which is drawing water from the soil through its roots and taking carbon dioxide through the stomata from the atmosphere and the chlorophyll molecules get excited in presence of sunlight and with these materials that is sunlight carbon dioxide and water it is making glucose and it is giving out oxygen which are which is coming out through the stomata this is the picture which uh, is present in your textbook that is NCRT book here you can see here you can see the waxy cuticle is present above the upper epidermis and there is longitudinal chloroplasts palisade parenchyma and there are air spaces let's see it uh, thoroughly here you can see that cuticle is present at the topmost position below which epidermis is present and below the epidermis there are longitudinal palisade parenchyma place and in the lower epidermis there are stomata or the minute pores through which transpiration takes place as well as the exchange of gases that is oxygen and carbon dioxide also takes place chlorophyll absorbs the light energy from the sunlight and gets excited and after getting excited what does it do it converts light energy to chemical energy and splits water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen this process is also known as the photolysis and finally in the dark phase the reduction of carbon dioxide to carbohydrate takes place through kelvin cycle now here are the structures of stomata here you can see these are the tiny pores present in the epidermis of leaf or stem through which the gaseous exchange and transpiration occurs now in case of transpiration what happens in presence of sunlight the extra water vapor comes out through the stomata to the outside environment now here are the two scenarios in which is showing that stomata is open and another one it is showing that the stomata is closed now regarding this opening and closing of stomatal pores the opening and closing of stomatal pores are controlled by the targetity of guard cells what happens the guard cells uptake water from the surrounding cells they swell here you can see that they have swelled and these are the two kidney or bean shaped guard cells surrounded by the cell wall and they got stretched and as a result what happens the meat portion has opened and through which gaseous exchange and water vapor can come out and while it is and while the water is released it becomes flushed this is the condition here you can see here the pore is closed now what are the functions of stomata first function is the exchange of gases that is oxygen and carbon dioxide second one is the extra amount of water vapor comes outside during transpiration through the stomata now let's go through the heterotrophic nutrition hetero means different this is a type of nutrition in which the organisms depend upon other organisms for food to survive in case of autotrophic nutrition we have found that the organisms can produce their own food but mucor yeast agaricus perform such kind of saprophytic nutrition and the second one is parasitic nutrition in this skin type of nutrition what happens an organism derives its food from the body of another living organism without killing it but it actually harms for example in case of us in our small intestine the tap one or the tinea solium sites and it draws nutrition from our body and it actually harms us doda rafflesia are all examples of parasitic nutrition and finally the holozoic nutrition now in this case what happens either the part of plants or animals is ingested or the whole organism is taken as in case of amoeba we can easily see this type of nutrition now here are the various sequences of holozoic nutrition here you can see that food material in front of it and the pseudopodia has protruded to bring the food material inside this step is known as the ingestion now after ingestion what happens the digestive enzymes start reacting on the food material and it starts digesting it and as a result what happens the food material becomes very small and tiny and gets absorbed this process is known as the absorption and they become part of the uh, amoeba that is they become part of the cytoplasm this is known as the assimilation and the substances which are not get digested what happens they just go through the cell membrane to outside this process is called the ejection so this is all about the first part of my video and uh, i shall discuss the human nutrition or the digestive system of 
human beings in the second part of the video. I hope you have understood the topic and if you like my video then do share, like and comment and don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.